Computer-generated imagery, or CGI, has allowed for a massive range of new stories to be told through movies and TV shows. Black holes, dragons, superheroes, oh my. I used to think of CGI as some sort of mysterious nerd magic that could only be achieved on some powerful supercomputer at a Hollywood studio. I began my own visual effects journey when I discovered that this wasn't the case. This is an actual career path for thousands of artists across the world. I now work for a small production studio called Corridor Digital, and we use visual effects to help tell really fun stories, make fun short films on YouTube. And dude, I've gotten to make some pretty cool things, I think, such as a Nerf gun turret made out of Nerf guns, because why not? Or the world's most intense action scene about fidget spinners. We even imagined what it would look like if you vaped so hard, you became vape. <laughs> I love bringing things to life that didn't previously exist. And at the heart of that for me are visual effects. I am a big fan. Now, not everyone shares my excitement, and I get that. It's fine, because sometimes the effects suck. Sometimes you notice bad CGI, and it takes you out of the movie, because you go to movies to enjoy stories. And when you're taken out, that sucks. Last summer, for instance, I came out of the theater having just seen Black Panther. And I really enjoyed this movie. I did. It gave me the coolest comic book movie villain I'd ever seen. But the, the effects, I, I was disappointed in something like this from a Marvel movie, and particularly in the final fight scene like this. Now, I wasn't alone either. I Twitter for some examples of movies with bad CGI and they overwhelmingly responded with Black Panther. So, uh, yeah. I am hesitant to, you know, just openly criticize the effects of a movie because a lot of hardworking artists help create them. And I think about those artists a lot. But you know who doesn't think about those artists? Basically everyone else. You see, there's a misconception regarding how CGI is created. People tend to think that they're made by computers and not real people like it's a Snapchat filter or something. We press a button and poof, movie magic. <laughs> the Hollywood VFX pipeline, however, is really complicated. First, you need to have proper onset uh, data acquisition to feed to the camera tracking department so that a bunch of sculptors can build complicated 3D models to send to texture artists who make them look real. And once the lighting is set, you, you have render farms managed 24 hours a day to spit out clean looking CGI just to land on a compositor's desk who performs video Photoshop to make everything look good. And if you didn't get all that, it's all right. Just understand that each one of those steps could only begin once the previous step's been completed. And if any of those steps break down, you're left polishing a turd, <laughs> as is said in the industry. I promise. Uh, yet, VFX have become so ubiquitous these days that we're not wowed by them anymore, and we've become desensitized. While not everyone is an artist, everyone is a judge or a critic, as they say. If anything is slightly off, audiences can tell that it's fake. And they may not realize how it is, but they can tell. So what tips us off? The first telltale sign is that it simply isn't photoreal. And what I mean by that is that the lighting and materials aren't realistic enough to represent reality. It's a simple idea, but a pretty tall order. And Pretty unfair, to be completely honest. I mean, we all have a lot of experience with reality. We see it every waking moment. Everything you see right now has a material property associated with it that identifies how it uh, reacts to light and therefore how you observe it. Things like color, reflectivity, texture, transparency. Skin, for example, is slightly transparent, and it absorbs and scatters the light that hits it. You don't realize it, but you know exactly what all these properties are without having to think about it. So anytime they're wrong, <laughs> you can tell. But it's not just about how CGI looks. It's about how it moves, too. You see, bad CGI can oftentimes look photoreal when paused, but in motion, looks wrong. And there are three main ways we actually go about creating motion in the digital world. First, there is animation, where the motion is designed from scratch. Second, we have Simulation, which is just you know, putting some rules into a program and then letting it decide where things fall. And lastly, we have motion capture, which records the movements of an actor in order to most accurately replicate the subtle ways that we move. Just like that. And Planet of the Apes is actually a great example of how 
you can use all those three techniques together. Motion capture provides the core movement of the skeleton and face, something that's pretty hard to replicate without reference. I mean, these gray skin suits aren't just fashion statements. Because added on top of that, we actually simulate muscle and hair so that it can react to the motion of the performer. And even though this looks more natural, that's not to say that there isn't any human intervention. Animators usually have to come through and alter things to make sure everything works together. And these days, CGI is good enough that, you know, you know it passes initial inspection. We've gotten good enough at rendering and mo moving things that it's not a big deal. But there's one area of scrutiny where only absolute perfection is acceptable. Realistic human faces. <laughs> People can scrutinize faces to an incredible degree. I mean, it is the defining feature in how we tell each other apart. We've even evolved the ability to tell if someone's sick simply by looking at them, because anything abnormal with the face tends to elicit disconcertment. So when we try to create faces, we can experience what's called the uncanny valley. And this graph plots the emotional response against the realism of a fake character. And all the way on the far left, we have characters that are super obviously not real. And there's an emotional disconnect there. But as they begin to get more realistic, you begin to connect more. Gollum from Lord of the Rings, for instance, is incredibly lifelike, and I think we even connect with him as a person. However, his proportions are all wrong, so you're never really fooled into thinking he's actually human. The familiarity isn't totally there. It's the same reason why we enjoy movies like The Incredibles, but feel disturbed when watching The Polar Express. <laughs> you see, something weird happens when characters begin to get this realistic. We they fall into the uncanny valley, and we begin to have an adverse reaction. Do you think this is cute? No, I, I bet you don't. Because, yeah, we can identify this monster as the rock, but everything about it just seems wrong. And there are lots of examples in movies these days that have this, where we try to create CGI characters as humans, but we kind of just like aim for it and just fail. And it's something artists are still struggling with today. <laughs> Even Star Wars Rogue One, which had some of the most realistic-looking digital characters ever created, failed to be absolutely perfect. We can still tell that they were not real people. I mean, maybe it was the lighting or the, the eyes, maybe it was the motion of the lips. Honestly, I, I don't know. I can only think of two examples where we truly succeeded in climbing out of the Uncanny Valley. Take a look at this shot from the movie Logan. Now, you're probably figuring that this young Wolverine is just the result of some simple digital makeup. No, they actually recreated Hugh Jackman's face entirely in CGI. And this, this blows my mind because there are dozens of examples like this throughout the whole movie, but no one could tell. The other example is from Blade Runner 2049, and the character Rachel is actually in the first movie, but is CGI in the sequel. And it took the effects team over a year to perfect her, and the results were so convincing, I had no idea she wasn't real. Okay, I haven't actually seen the first movie, so maybe that's why I didn't clue into the fact that she hadn't aged a day in 37 years. Now, Blade Runner 2049 went on to win the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects in 2018, and at first, I was a little bit disappointed, because you see, I felt War for the Planet of the Apes deserved the Oscar. It was an incredible technical achievement, creating an entire cast of lifelike digital characters. But here's the thing. Great visual effects are about more than just technical ability. It's about artistic expression as well. And that's something 2049 had in spades. Oh, man, that movie had an aesthetic. Academy voters were swayed by the technical and artistry of that film. That and apparently some of the more elderly uh, voters thought that the apes were real and wondered how they got, got them to behave so well on camera. Remember, movie magic. But for real, though, these movies push the bounds of technology to do one very important thing, and that is create the ability to tell better stories. Because at the end of the day, that's the most important aspect of visual effects. They need to serve the story. When the effects of a movie are flashy just for the sake of being flashy, they don't serve any other purpose than to simply make a spectacle event. And not to say that these movies are bad, but you know what I mean, the Transformers films, the disaster flicks, the monster movies, the Justice League. <laughs> more and more movies are relying on CGI to hide a weak plot, and audiences are reacting accordingly by turning up their noses at it. They desire movies with real, practical effects. And I understand. Knowing that what you're seeing is real and tangible can be exciting. 
But I think what audiences are really craving is merely suspension of disbelief. When they notice CGI, the illusion is shattered. And audiences simply want less of that. Christopher Nolan actually agrees with this sentiment, so he strives to capture as much as possible in camera as he can. And he even claims that he only ever uses CGI as a last resort. However, I don't really think that's the case. Oh, I have no doubt that if he could have dropped Anne Hathaway into a wormhole or burned Aaron Eckhart's face off, he would have. <laughs> no, no, he just knows that CGI is a tool and he knows exactly how to use that tool to make you forget that you're watching a movie. I mean, it's the same thing with Jurassic Park. That was the magic of that. This movie came out 26 years ago and the effects still hold up today. But do they though? Do they really? Do you notice anything strange about this shot? Like maybe a missing velociraptor for a frame? This is actually in the movie, by the way. But if you really go back and look at the effects from Jurassic Park, even though they were super groundbreaking for the time, I think you would find that they don't hold up today. It just doesn't matter because they were used so creatively that for the first time ever, you actually believed that dinosaurs were real. And that's something that I think the recent sequels failed to do. On a technical level, Jurassic World has far superior CGI, but it's just never really grounded in reality. I, I just, I feel like maybe they were too preoccupied with whether or not they could use CGI. They didn't stop to think if they should. Normally though, you only ever really notice CGI when it is bad. The vast majority of the time, effects are invisible, so you never notice them to begin with. David Fincher, for instance, is a perfectionist when it comes to creative control over his movies, to the point that he would rather create digital blood than to deal with all the variables of using fake blood on set and leaving it up to chance. His team is just so good, you never notice. Did you know that his movie, The Social Network, has a thousand VFX shots in it? That is more than all of the shots in Godzilla combined. And that's because making one person into two uh, to twins who interact with each other is really hard technical work and took hundreds of artists a lot of time to make sure you wouldn't notice. Because if, if they hadn't worked hard, you would have known. Now there's one final factor here that really dictates the quality of effects in movies these days, and that is time. The biggest problem with CGI isn't the talent of the artist, it's the time required to create those effects. However, movie making is a business after all, and Requiring more time means more money. Release dates are incredibly important to the bottom line of a movie, and as projects rush to try to meet deadlines, they can become rushed. And this was ultimately the problem with Black Panther. Now, it's important to note that the vast majority of the shots in this movie are excellent, but there were also 2,500 of them. And even though the work was divided between 13 different studios, they didn't have enough time to really complete everything as well as they could have. They were refilming this final fight scene in October, but the movie still had to come out in February, leaving only a few weeks to do all the effects. And the team that stepped up to do all those effects has even won the VFX Oscar for all four of these movies. They obviously have the skill, it just goes to show that you can't rush great CGI. And like all forms of art, quality is just a mixture of time and skill. The greatest Renaissance painters took years to complete their paintings. But if I tried to paint something great, it wouldn't matter how much time I spent because I lacked the skill. It's the same reason why you'd probably find Michelangelo making a pretty janky looking statue if he only had a week to complete it. I'm just being honest. So in the movie industry, where time is finite, artists have to strike a balance. No film is ever finished, it just gets released. So next time you're watching a summer blockbuster, and even if the visuals fall flat, just take a moment to appreciate all of the hard work that went unnoticed. Visual effects artists are artists after all. They pour their blood, sweat, and tears into these stories that capture our imaginations. And sometimes even their best work may have been invisible all along. Thank you. <laughs>